Welcome Facebook and welcome Instagram. It's noon and it is New Year's Eve. On the eve of 2019, I could not be happier than to be here with you to welcome this new year. 2018 brought a lot of good things and a lot of beauty and a lot of crazy. And we are all very happy to have 2018 be over. And you know who you are. I want to say first, thank you for being here. Thank you for caring enough about yourself that you have joined me today. I have linked the guidebook in the post. For those of you on Instagram, you have the guidebook linked on Linktree. Please go ahead and get the guidebook and print it if you can while I'm introing and while we sit to gently welcome each other because it will be really helpful to have your hand and a pen and a piece of paper to write on. It's much more useful than to do this on your phone. So let's welcome each other. Just take a moment to close your eyes. Settle into your breathing. And just notice where the breath travels in through your nostrils, all the way down into your belly and from your belly all the way back out through your nose. With each breath, just thankfulness. maybe even a little smile, how lucky we are to be together, to hold the space with each other and for each other. As for me, my thankfulness incorporates a wish for your sweet, easeful 2019. And it also includes a wish for exactly the right challenges that will help you become stronger and more refined as the year unfolds. Nothing you cannot handle. Let's take two more breaths here together in the silence. Good. Last breath, full breath in. And exhale from your belly, through your nostrils, empty out. Good. Good. Welcome. Okay, so I have my notes and I have your notes, your beautiful guidebook. I want to give thanks, first of all, to Michelle Martello, Minima Designs. I love you so much. Your first page after the title page, Ritual. These are definitions of the word ritual. I just want to get clear on this because this is something that I do well. I don't often say this about myself, but ritual is something that I definitely care about, I practice, I do often, and I feel that it yields results. So ritual is a portal, it is a doorway to a moment of sanctity and serenity and, dare I say, sanctuary. And you can do this anytime. It can be 20 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes, 1 moment. The more you incorporate ritual into your life, I have found in my own experience, the more I feel the sacredness of all things. And if we practice yoga and do meditation, what else are we doing aside from that? Ritual requires only your attention and your dedication. Add your devotion, if you like. That's all it requires. It doesn't need materials or things. It requires a closed... I and an open heart. Ritual is a simple form of deepening your devotion. Now, holding that steady, let's go into the questions that we have. We have four aspects of this particular session today together, and I'll just keep toggling my gaze between Facebook and Instagram. I love you guys. The first section is asking questions. So we have a few questions. What am I seeing? And so as you take a moment to think about what it is that you're seeing right now, what it is that you're seeing both as having happened in 2018 and what are you seeing for the future in 2019? Make some notes. 
when I talk about this inside of myself and think about this inside of myself, what I'm seeing, I have seen a lot of twists and turns in 2018. Things that I don't necessarily share in the public eye. But I see all of those things as ways to refine. So what are you seeing that was hard? What are you seeing that was easy? What are you seeing that was beautiful and victorious? What are you seeing that was absolutely death-defyingly scary? What am I seeing? And I'm just gonna give you a few moments for each question while we're together, because I think it's more potent than me just running off the questions and then having you do it later. What am I seeing? Okay, the second question is probably already kind of coming to your mind. What am I missing? What am I missing? When I think about the twists and turns and the various things that happened this year, I realize there are things, this question came from my own experience, there are things that I am missing. There are pieces of information about people, places, things, situations that I am absolutely missing. Otherwise, the situation would not be as confusing appearing to me. So what am I missing? And when you make some notes and you sit with yourself, and you take these few minutes just to be with yourself and sit, think, write, you will figure it out. What you're missing will suddenly become evident to you in ways that you can't imagine without a pen in your hand and a moment of ritual. What am I missing? <clears throat> While you're writing from the mystic's point of view, this is from my dear Rabbi Zach, uh, from the mystic's point of view, from a radical perspective, which understands that religions are simply toolkits to assist in our evolution. From this vantage point, another ritual, even a foreign one, like writing things down from the year that's passed and the year to come, is just another opportunity for consciousness shifting. That's all a ritual is. It doesn't have to be imbued with any negative overtone. It's a ceremony. It's a celebration even. Okay, third question. What am I choosing? I have chosen things this year. Most of the things I've chosen were absolutely to my deep and high, high benefit. Such as continuing to choose my sobriety. Continuing to choose my partner. Continuing to choose to be a conscious mother. Continuing to apologize when I need to apologize. Continuing to choose to lead my team even when I am deeply afraid. What am I choosing? And again, you could take this as this is what I've chosen in 2018 or and or this is what I'm choosing in 2019. So you get to decide what you're choosing. And I'll give you a moment for that. The fourth question, what am I releasing? I made some notes for myself. Oh, and you know what else I was choosing actually, if you're still on it? I made some notes for myself. I'm choosing self-care dates. Thank you, Ange Peters, for the CEO dates idea. I'm choosing promptness, consistency. I'm choosing reliability. I'm choosing bills paid early. I chose that all year and my credit score is insanely good. And I'm gonna continue choosing that. I'm choosing creative time. I'm choosing no more piles in my house, except if I'm working on it in the moment. Otherwise, no piles. I'm evolving my sweet, beautiful mother with that. What am I releasing? Here I go. Here are my notes. I'm releasing my inbox. I will no longer have a full inbox. I got down to hover around 50 this year, almost daily. 
I'm now hovering at around 15. That feels amazing. I can see exactly what the priorities are in 15 inbox. I am releasing all the things on my calendar that feel obligatory. I am releasing all of the relations that feel obligatory with total respect and utter courtesy. I will not say yes to things or people that do not give me great deep joy. I am releasing that. I am also releasing all of the stuff in our cupboards. James and I have cleaned out our kitchen in the last few days. I am also releasing old food, old clothes, every old mail. These are tangible things. You can also take it to the intangibles and say, okay, I am releasing this particular scenario, this particular opinion, this particular belief. And again, if you are releasing a person, guys, please do it with total respect and total courtesy. If you are complaining that there isn't enough oneness and togetherness in this world, and then you are still hating on somebody in your very immediate sphere, you are a hypocrite. You're allowed to release people without hating them in your heart because the only prisoner when you hate somebody in your heart is you. Release all of it. You can release them with respect and courtesy, I ask. Let's turn the page. We're going from asking questions to inviting clarity. This is a good one. Where in my day, and this is a very specific hour to hour inquiry, where in my day do I feel most on mission? So this is an inquiry that will help you understand what part of your day are you the most productive, attentive, focused, visionary? My answer was when I am working for my team. I straight up wrote doTERRA when I'm organizing, contacting, reaching out and clarifying. That's when I feel most on mission. That is usually happening in the mornings between nine and 12. That's me. Where are you? What part of your professional or personal life makes you feel most on mission? And what time does that happen? It's a beautiful question to ask yourself because it means you will stop fighting yourself during the times of the day when you are not on mission. Get the hell away from the computer and lie down. Go listen to a yoga nidra. I love it when I get a little feisty. You know I mean this because I love you and I don't want you to suffer anymore during your days. Second question on inviting clarity. With whom am I most organized in keeping my word? Hmm. For me, strangely and wonderfully, this is actually no longer an issue. I keep my word with everyone in my life. If I say that I'm doing something, I'm fucking doing it, pardon my French, and I'm not gonna back away from it, even if I don't want to do it because I've said I was going to do it. That is a good feeling. I don't lose sleep over such things. And I advise with all due respect and humility that you begin to do the same. As you inquire about with whom you are most organized in keeping your word and you have the list of the people, you can take it a step further and say, okay, if I'm most organized with this person in this particular scenario, what are the actions I'm taking? What are the thoughts that I'm hosting that help me to be this person with this person or this scenario? And you'll start to extrapolate exactly the thought processes and the actions you're taking that will help you to do that with everyone in your life. It's a very sweet and very, very simple observation. Okay. The third question on inviting clarity. How can I create more space for clear vision in my day? What does that mean? It means, guys, you're going to get an hour back. And it will be your design. And it might happen first thing in the morning before anyone in your household is up. It might happen at the all the way at the end of the day, but when everyone else is asleep. 
It might happen when everyone else is otherwise occupied with homework and such things. But I am asking you, again, with great respect and humility, to please carve out even a half an hour. I will live with a half an hour. Even 30 minutes of your day where you have space for clear vision, where you have space where you can just create, you can just write, you can make art, you can do whatever, read a book, not on Kindle, in your hands. <laughs> I'm so old school. And I did get a Kindle for Christmas, and I don't like it. But I will use it because I should stop carrying heavy bags on airplanes. Clear vision, half an hour. Ideally, one hour, if you can. The final inquiry on inviting clarity. How can I create more time for open sky mind in my year? This is where I tell you to get online and schedule your retreat for April, May, June, July, August, September, October of 2019. Don't wait. Schedule it now. Book your plane. You'll save a bunch of money and get it done. That is space for open sky mind. When you leave your house and you leave your dishes and you leave your family sacrilege and be on your own by yourself to study and listen, learn, play, practice, create on your own. And if that sounds scary to you, I'm with you 100%. That used to scare the life out of me. And now when I travel alone, I thoroughly enjoy. I savor, in fact. And I get so much writing done and so much thinking done. Creating more time for open sky mind in 2019. And I would really recommend that you get that done within the next couple weeks. Third, creating meaningful practices. Lots of us run into roadblocks here. I'm going to keep it super, super simple. Okay, we've already gone over the meaning of ritual. Awesome. This is where you get to look at your day and come up with the tiniest micro, tiny little practices for you to, in the morning, nurture yourself. What are two things you can do? Three things you can do. I gave you, Michelle and I gave you seven lines. Don't use them all. I love you guys. Keep writing. Okay. What can you do in the morning to nurture yourself? Tiny little actions. Make a couple of notes. This is a pretty quick and simple one. And if it doesn't seem simple, really spend some time on it and just come up with a few things. I'm going to give you my uh, examples. Morning, I wake up in the morning, either I do, if I'm super tired, I will actually wake up and immediately do yoga nidra with Rod Stryker on his app called Sanctuary. End of story. It's right on my phone. I put my little ear pods in and boom, lie down. If I am awake, I will do a yoga practice, usually with scandalously myself or him or one of my friends on Yoga Glow. If you don't know about GLOW, you're going to go to elenabrower.com slash G-L-O, and you'll see some really beautiful programs and classes for you. Right there. Subscription costs you less for a month on Yoga GLOW than it does for one yoga class right now. So smart. Midday. Oh, and also in the morning, I do pull a card. I will dork out and pull a card. 1 p.m. today, right after I'm done here, I'm going to go over to my publisher's Facebook page, Sounds True, and I'm going to talk about Practice You Deck. I pull a card from my deck. Usually I'll pull a card from Gabby's deck, from the Zen Tarot. I love a card pull. Boy, just to let somebody else tell me how the day is going to roll out, it's the best. Midday, observing yourself. Okay? So here's where noon rolls around, 
I am starting to glaze. This is what I've experienced. Okay. This is why I'm asking you to do this midday noon rolls around. I'm starting to glaze over. I've been on several phone calls. I've either listened and learned or I've offered and shared. I am now starting to really lose my focus and my vision. And in observing that midday, what do I do? Now I go and eat something. Surprise, I'm one of those people that could go all day without eating. I just don't even care about the food because I'm so happy doing what I'm doing. And in observing that, I will also go and maybe even take a little power nap or meditate. It's the nicest thing to observe that when you lose your focus, there are other things to do rather than push through it. You know what pushing through does? It gives you a reading like I got on my Dutch test recently. I took this very vast and expansive cortisol test, which shows that I actually, even with all my practices, still could do better with regards to a chronic level of stress. And I don't feel very stressed. But if I don't do these midday chill outs and these morning rituals, guess what? The chemicals show me in my bloodstream that they're elevated and I need to relax even more. So my mission for 2019 is actually to dial it back. Travel less, do less, midday chill for real. So when you observe yourself midday, just see how is my focus? How is my attention? How is my happiness versus the first thing in the morning? You may be the opposite of me and you may love the midday and the midday may be when you pick yourself up and the morning is super, super chill for you. But just to have these little spaces where you can observe yourself, I think is so crucial. And this way, you know what action to take. Thirdly, evening. I wrote understanding yourself. I want you to take that and make that whatever you feel you need. What does it mean to understand yourself? What does it mean to actually take some time in the evening to sit back and scroll back to the very beginning of the day and think, wow, where was I this morning and how did I act? And what happened in the midday and how was I showing up? Just taking the time to review and really understand what are my motivations? How am I doing right now? For whom am I caring the most if it's not me? These are important questions and the evening is a really good time to ask it. And for those of you mamas out there who have 8,000 people in your home, an evening is not a time for you to be reflective in any way. Take it a little bit later and just do it when everyone else is asleep. Even if you're lying down with little Reiki hands on your heart and your belly understanding yourself just go through the day and see are you proud did it work what could you do better you could even ask your children which i've done for joan most of jonah's life since he was three or four what could i have done better my brother is the question that i ask him and he always answers sometimes i really could have done something better and sometimes i really there's nothing The other day we had a really contentious day. And when I asked him at the end of the day, was there anything I could have done better? He looked me square in the eyes and he said, you know what, mama, this one was me. I could have done better. You actually handled it really well. What a gift. And he wasn't just bullshitting me. He was being honest and I really did do a good job. And it really is because I turn the hands back every single night and I look back and I think, how did I do? And some days I do great and some days I really suck. But to be honest about it with myself, that's the gift I get to pass on to the kid. So take some notes. Twice this year for study or learning. Do you see how I secretly snuck in Retreat time for you twice in this document. You can thank me. You can pat me on the back. Yes, I did that twice. Open sky mind during your year. I'm saying twice for study and learning. But, you know, if you want to take one as just a total beach vacation, that's fine. Take a second and write down the two places you really want to go. Would you mind? Just two places. 
And when you're ready, you can turn your page. <clears throat> this is a sweet, deep one, this page. Affirm your prayerful reality. What does that mean? I'm not this kind of girl who talks like this. What does that mean? It means that you take the time to affirm that there is indeed a dialogue going on at any given moment between you and your maker, whatever your conception of divinity happens to be. There is a dialogue going on right now. Is it negative? Is it positive? What is the nature of this dialogue? And if you choose to affirm your prayerful reality, please answer me this. Do you think prayer is supplication and asking or prayer is an affirmation to let God know that you're listening? And that can change moment to moment. Sometimes, very recently in fact, I was on my knees in tears asking. Not asking for a specific thing, just asking for clarity. And not asking God necessarily, but asking my mom who passed three years ago, almost. Whatever your conception of God is, it doesn't matter. And in point number one, I say, pray to let God know you're listening. So yes, sometimes it will be a question like, please, can I have some clarity on this matter? Please, I have no idea what to do. I have no idea how to handle this. I cannot manage it on my own, please. I'm listening. That's my prayer. Pray to let your heart hear your own forgiveness. That's part of my prayer. How many times have I screwed up in this year, in this life? How many times do I need to sit back and let my heart know that I am forgiven? And just listen for the reverberation of that affirmation. And I do, plenty of times, a week, a day even, sometimes. You owe it to yourself to treat yourself with this level of care and love. Pray to open your mind to a more peaceful flow. This is something I've learned from my teacher. This is something that your yoga practice or your movement practice, maybe you're a runner, maybe you're a cyclist, Maybe you do something else, but every time you move your body and you squeeze the parts of your body and you move limp around, you are opening your mind to a more peaceful flow. Every time you meditate, you're doing that. There's no mistake as to what is flowing through your body chemically, physiologically when you move. So yes, this is part of your prayer for reality. I'm praying to open my mind to a more peaceful flow every morning when I sit down to meditate. Every morning. After I've moved or done yoga nidra. Every morning. I pray to open my mind to a more peaceful flow. And I use my breath work and I use my body and I use whatever means necessary to get there. And finally, pray to open your body to your highest, sweetest knowing. Okay? That for me is all about the practice of yoga, which I now firmly have back in my life. When I open my body to my highest, sweetest knowing, there is not much I cannot do. And when I'm doing it consistently, I believe in myself wholeheartedly, and there's really nothing stopping me. Nothing is impossible. So these four sections, I want you just to write your own prayer. Be creative. Maybe it's a drawing. Maybe it's a collage. But these, these are pretty good directions for your prayers. And if you have other ones, you get to do those too. I just felt like my mom licking my finger to turn the page. The last page. I like these sort of quick, rapid fire questions. For 2018, what was the biggest surprise? 
I have a few. But I was able to maintain my uh, position in my business it was a big surprise. That I was able to actually be the partner I've always dreamed of being was also a big surprise. That I was able to be the mom I've always dreamed of being was also weirdly a big surprise. What are the most profound understandings? Your surprise can be negative too. It can, you know, there, there are freaking surprises that happen. My gosh, surrounding me, all of my friends had so many weird surprises this year. What are the most profound understandings from this past year? That's such a nice thing. And I'm sorry that we don't have a whole lot of space for that, but I want you to take the space elsewhere and write perhaps in your journal, the most profound understandings. This one, even though I would like to give you a little more time, I think this one requires you to sit quietly sometime today or tomorrow. <clears throat> Sooner is better. What was the most touching loss from 2018? And conversely, the most thrilling gain. Who is or are your closest allies from this past year? And you're bringing them forward. And as annoying as this might be, please forgive me in advance. What is the dollar amount in your bank account right now? I really want you to look today. If I give you any gifts today, it is this. You will no longer be afraid to look at your bank account. Face it, write it down, and start to grow it. I've said this before and I will say it so many more times and I have teachers all up and down from the Handel Group to Kate Northrup who have taught me that the more I look at my bank account, the more it grows. <clears throat> For 2019, what is your first focus? Where are you first focusing your attention? What is the first thing you're thinking about? Whether it's something you want to accomplish or a, an energy that you wish to embody, what's your first focus? <clears throat> and for 2019, what is your perfect vision? Your very, very perfect vision, what is it? I would take a little more time than we've got together on that too. I think that's pretty important. For 2019, what are you studying? I am going to start studying a little bit more of the stones and the oils as they relate to traditional Chinese medicine. I have two massive textbooks. I will share those with you over the course of the year. How to apply stones on Chinese points and oils. Continuing to refine my understanding of that, that's fun for me. I am dorking out. What are you studying? What are you opening is the next inquiry. What am I opening in 2019? Am I opening the flow of money, love, time? This is what I'm opening. Who am I keeping close in 2019? These seem very simple, these inquiries, but when you write them down, you give the universe directionality. And I'm excited for you to see what happens. Who are you keeping close in the coming year? And lastly, what's the dollar amount at the year end of 2019? And I wouldn't necessarily dare you to write this until you see what you've got now. And I would ask you to either double, triple, quadruple, go crazy, go crazy. Even more. 
Do not limit yourself, please. I'm looking through the questions on Facebook to see if we have any questions. Yes, I will be recording. I am recording. This will be posted. Caitlin, I love you. Kate Gass, love you too. Kat Becker, awesome. Debbie, DK, amazing. Thank you. Okay. That's what I've got for you. <clears throat> I have one more little prayer, which is something that I pulled from my uh, Instagram from earlier this year. <clears throat> And then a couple of things that I want to share with you. And I will take questions. So if you guys are needing me to answer anything, don't hesitate to ask questions. I am going to start scrolling through Insta as well. So far, just sweet love coming in. Okay. Just sweet love. Hi, Sam. Oh, Yog Sonor, I love you. Gracias. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Do you know how much I love you? I do know, Kat actually. I do. Jade, Marnie, Linda, que bellissima Linda, que Rosenblatt, hi babe, Will, love you. Fernie, Fern's on, Jen Harvey, Tiffany, all of you guys. Oh God, Kati, Lisa, Joanna, Christine. So good, but no questions. Okay, that's awesome. I'm going to read to you. Counting blessings. You can close your eyes. I think it's nice to close your eyes. You don't have to look at me. Counting blessings, offering respect, learning how to listen. Clumsily prayerful. Most mornings I lay out my stones like a little girl with high hope and a clear vision. May we learn how to talk with each other rather than at each other. May we remember that there are many sides to every story. May we practice turning over each one until we can begin to feel into what others are experiencing before we try to fix it. May we keep our kindness as our primary objective. May we release perfection and ease to let in the hard things and the difficulty. And may we call on our movement and our meditation to bring us closer to our fragilities and our uncertainties and our similarities. That's a really good prayer for this year. I also have some really good news, which is if you would like a little more, at one o'clock I'm gonna go on to the Sounds True Facebook page, my publisher, my sweet publisher, and I'm gonna do a little talk and review on how I use the Practice You deck. Pretty honored to do that. And the other good news, which is really the best news ever, is that I'm finally gonna be doing a podcast and it's gonna drop in January. I will give you the date as soon as possible. It's called Practice You and it's gonna be beautiful and I have such a high vision for it and I can't wait for you to hear it because I love a video, but I'm really an audio girl. So I look forward to sharing that with you too. Facebook, I love you. I thank you guys so much for being here with me. It means the world to have this visit with you before the year ends and the next one begins. Thank you for all of this year, for everything you've shared and keep sharing. And Instagram, I have so much fun with you guys. And I wanna say to all of you who continue to comment and like and share and post, you know, I really am thankful this, platform, while it is so challenging to put boundaries around it, I've managed to do it. And now that I have, it's such an opening for me. And when I go on those three times a day, I so look forward to it. Like I look forward to looking in my old yearbook as a kid at the end of the year. I so look forward to seeing all of you guys when I can. So just thank you. Thank you for your kindness and thank you for your attention and thank you for your, um, for your care. I feel it a lot. 
and I'm wishing you guys the best new year. And if you'd like to see me again, I'll be back on at one o'clock for Sounds True. Uh, I'll do it right here on my own Instagram. I'll do the live. I might actually, you know what? I'll do it on the Practice You Instagram. I'll be live on Practice You Instagram at one to talk about the cards. And I will be live on Sounds True's Instagram at one to talk about the cards. Uh, Sounds True's Facebook, rather, to talk about the cards at one. I love you guys. Ciao, Facebook. Thank you. <laughs>